Gigapan's new Capture Studio software allows photographers the ability to tether a laptop directly to the Epic Pro and attached camera, enabling live viewing of the individual frames as they're being captured and compiled into one gigapixel image. Today, I want to walk you through the basics of our new software. When you launch the software, it opens up into a home screen. From here, navigation is pretty simple. And most importantly, what I want to walk you through today is taking a pano with our software. The first thing you need to do is set the camera field of view. Very similar to what you do when you're using the Epic Pro as a standalone. Uh, there's two ways actually to set the field of view in Capture Studio. The first is by clicking the tools menu. And you'll see here that there's an option to set camera field of view. When you select this, a new window is going to open up. You can see here that we are viewing the live view of the camera. And there's also four black triangles that allow you to control the Pro. And all you need to do is simply follow the directions in the text box. Set the camera zoom, click next when done, align the horizon with the top of camera view. Now we will use, how about we use this, uh, this power pole, the top of this power pole. We align that with the top of the camera view. We hit next, align the horizon with the bottom. We raise it up and line it up with the bottom. Click next, camera setup is successful. One thing I want to point out here is that you can see these two boxes up here. There is a horizontal and vertical field of view. You can actually make reference of these numbers and uh, because you can use them later on in the other way which uh, you can input the field of view and I'll show you that right now. So we'll click OK. It's all set up. So the other way to change the field of view in Capture Studio is by clicking on this icon right here which is your configure your Gigapan Pro. When you click that a window is going to open up again and you'll see there's all these drop downs with these fields and I'll go into these in detail in a different tutorial but right now I want to point out these two fields right here horizontal field of view and vertical field of view these fields allow you to manually input your field of view for example I commonly use a full frame digital SLR and a 100 millimeter prime lens and I know from consistent use that the vertical field of view for this camera and lens combination is 13.3 degrees. So if I were to switch from this 50 millimeter to a 100 millimeter, I would simply just need to click in this field. I could change that to 13.3. The horizontal field of view automatically adjusts accordingly. And then I would click OK and I'd be ready to go. So now that the field of view is set, let's walk you through taking a pano. You can set up a pano two ways. One is in the pano menu, right here. New pano setup, new 360 pano setup. The other is by simply clicking this image icon right here. Again, you see we have live view displayed and we're seeing what the camera sees. You've also got the four black boxes, uh, or the four black triangles to control the pro, and then your text box here which tells you what you should be doing. Now we will go ahead, set camera zoom, click OK, move camera to the upper left corner of the pano. So we'll call this our upper left. We'll click next, it's set. Now we will move it to the lower right. And we'll call this our lower right. And you can see lower right corner is set, click OK to finish. Before we click OK and go uh, and exit out here, I want to point out here, you can see that this is telling you how many rows, how many columns, how many total pictures, and how much time it's going to take for you to take this pano. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now you're all set to take the pano. All you need to do is simply click this play icon. You'll see that the grid auto-populates in a 3x3. Three three. You've got a capture status here, which is your pictures that it's taking, the pictures remaining, the row that it's in, the column it's in, 
whether or not you're shooting brackets, and the time remaining. You can see as each image is shot, it's brought into its corresponding location on the grid. And then, when it's done, it'll return to its original starting position. You'll also get an alert that comes up that tells you that your pano is done. There we go. So that's it. Uh, you've successfully learned how to take a pano with Capture Studio. Thanks for watching. Take a look at our other tutorials that cover Capture Studio's features in greater detail, and those can be found on our website and our Facebook page. Thank you.